Hello. I'd like to talk about Kerbal Space Program. Specifically, I'd like to talk about the direction it's going and some of my concerns. Um, now, this is coming from Kerbal Space Program is my favorite game of all time. I've played more Kerbal Space Program than every other game combined this year, and uh, uh, it's no joke to say that I'm kind of a little bit of a fanboy, and this is coming from that sort of person. So, you know, it, it's sort of like if, if you get the people who who play Team Fortress and then complain that the pistol's been damped by 0.7% or whatever. I'm, I'm that sort of person when it comes to Kerbal, but I'd like to make my case and try and make it pretty um, clearly, make sure that everyone understands what I'm saying. So with that in mind, let me tell you why I think that right now Squad is moving in the wrong direction. Squad are the people who make KSP. I think they're moving in the wrong direction, and the direction they're moving is away from mods. So, first off, why am I drawing here instead of uh, actually talking over a session of Kerbal? That's because one of the mods I have installed just bricked my install of Kerbal because um, it's incompatible slightly with 0.25 and every release causes incompatibilities uh, and I just I, I can't bring myself to bother to reinstall Kerbal and all that crap, so gonna be drawing. Anyhow, that's uh, actually part of the point that I'm going to get to, but that point's a little ways off. First, I'd like to talk about the direction that Kerbal is going. So back in ye olden days, there was this game loop, which was launching a rocket. And what would happen is you would go around this loop really, really fast. You'd launch a rocket, you'd launch a rocket, you'd redesign it, launch it, redesign it, launch it, and you'd just spin real, real fast. And this is a quick little play loop that's very, very enjoyable. And sure, I mean, some, some launches are quite, quite extended, um, you know, going out to Jewel or whatever. But in most cases, launches only took, you know, maybe, maybe 10 minutes. And you got the design phase around that, right? So there were these two pieces where you've got the design and the launch. And the design takes a little bit longer than the launch, um, but it's really fun, and you get to save it and use it again. And So you've got these two loops, and they work very well together. Uh, you design, and then you launch, and then you design, and then you launch, or you launch again. Oh, wait, they screwed out of it. Launch again. Go back to design it. Launch again. Oh, wait, no, you, you got that. Launch again. Uh, so you've got this nice little feedback happening between these two core loops, and that's basically how games work. Um, you've got some core skill loops that nest very well inside of each other. What Kerbal is doing is they're adding in more loops. So you've got the launch loop, right? You've got the rocket loop, and you've got the design loop, and now you've got the cache loop, and then outside that you've got the science loop, and then outside that you've got the strategy and Kerbal Space Center loop, um, reputation loop, perhaps we can call it. So they're adding in more and more loops, and this is not a bad thing to do if you want to extend the gameplay, if you want to get the game to last longer. This is an RPG. Um, this is how RPGs work. They've got a very basic core loop, like battle, and then outside of that, they've got something what like uh, health and and magic points, and then out the outside of that, they've got something like uh, equipment uh, and level, and outside of that, they've got something like uh, towns and dungeons. And, you know, uh, they they just stack this level these these loops onto each other, and although none of the loops is particularly mesmerizing. The RPG has 40 or 50 or 100 or 400 hours of gameplay because you're always diving in and out of the various loops, um, and they give you a lot of control over that. RPGs do so that you can, as your as your personal preference demands, you can change your pace up, and that's kind of what Kerbal's doing. They're not doing it terribly well because there's no way for us to switch loops very easily, um, but that's basically what Squad's intention is. They're trying to extend the core gameplay of Kerbal by adding in all of these larger management pieces. That's not a very good fit, not for Kerbal. Uh, and it really kind of, I don't like saying that because Squad is clearly gung-ho about this. They're like, every time they release something, like, ooh, yeah, and we delayed this one feature, but that's because we're making it even cooler. And every time I see that, I'm like, no, stop. If, if the feature has to be cooler, don't put it in. Because all this is doing is distracting from what Kerbal is actually about. Squad's idea seems to be that Kerbal has to be a complete game when you download it. And that's really misunderstanding the place that Kerbal has uh, in the community. 
Kerbal is a platform for mods. Now, I don't want to overstate that here. A lot of players will probably never reach the state where they want to use mods. And I do really endorse putting a lot of gameplay into the core into the core game. But there is something about mods that allows for really exceptionally high level play um, on on the sort of diversity and quality that I have never seen in a game until Kerbal. So when you talk about mods, you're normally here are here are the two the two loops. This is launching a rocket and this is uh, building a rocket. When you're normally talking about mods and you're talking about what they do, you normally talk about like, oh well, it just puts like a little dot here and then you get something cool here or here. And if you're talking about something like Skyrim, for example, the mods are are a lot like that. They don't normally change the core pacing of the game. They don't change which loops are available. You're still always going to be going into dungeons, going into towns, and so on and so forth. A few of them are pretty extreme, but for the most part, they get along with the core game loops that the designers intended to put in the game. That's not the case with Kerbal. With Kerbal, the mods are the loops. See, here's our remote tech loop. This loop involves sending up ships that have uh, communication arrays, building ourselves a little bit of a communication base so that we can contact faraway places and, uh, and do whatever we need to do remotely. This loop here, this is our, uh, our, our colony loop, where we build colonies out on the moon or in space uh, or on Jewel. And this here, th this is our, our uh, extraterrestrial launch. And this, uh, this is all about building facilities that can actually build starships that aren't at Kerbal. Oh, oh here's a loop over here. This one's about uh, super heavy freighters. Oh, oh, this one here, um, this one, this one is about moving faster than light and transmitting energy. And all of these require the player to dive in and out of the core loops and in and out of each other. See, even though all of these loops are wobbly. And, and none of them are very polite. They all get along surprisingly well. While I am building up my remote tech facility, I might also be building a space station that will serve as an energy relay for my super heavy freighters, and those guys will carry my extraterrestrial launch devices over to my colony around Jewel. Um, this is a beautiful synergy, and this is not a synergy that could have ever come up if Squad controlled which loops I put in my game. Squad would never have invented these loops. Uh, not because they're dumb, but just because it's obviously not in their game plan. Moreover, even if they tried, they would not have been able to do this because they are smaller than their fan base. So, I don't mind that Squad is putting in additional loops. Um, I have to disable all of Squad's cute little crap in order to actually play the game. But, I mean, the fact that it's there doesn't bother me too much. Except that it really bothers me that they could really help this out. They could really make modding a whole lot better and easier. If they decided that they gave a shit about the actual, you know, gameplay here, if they decided that modding was going to be a focus for a while, they, create, they could create an integrated mod manager. Now, normally, I try not to be like, oh, it would be easy to do such and such, but I've created mods um, for, for a Kerbal. And, in fact, I have looked at the source code of this mod manager, which is a Kerbal mod manager that's archaic now, but I haven't found a better replacement for it. Um, I've, I've done all of this work, and I know for a fact that they could do an integrated mod manager easier than they could have done cash and way easier than they could have done science. Yeah, so that, that lovely destructible terrain that they've rolled out with all their buildings, um, I think that this is lovely stuff. You know what? It could use one more building, maybe down here somewhere. The mod management building, where you can go in and you can choose which mods are enabled, which order they load in for this save game, 
which ones uh, you know reload so that they they reinitialize correctly. That would not be terribly hard. Even if they didn't want to do it in game, it would be relatively easy to have an added mod manager out of game feature where you could do that sort of thing out of game. And if they implemented this mod API. Well, I'd also love it if it may made it actually easier to create the mods, because that's kind of nightmarish. But if they implemented this mod API, we wouldn't have some of the problems that we're currently having. Like, for example, right now, this doesn't look like this. It looks like this. Oh, I accidentally selected white. Sorry. It looks like this. And there's a giant fucking window that I can't get rid of because some of these mods have decided they needed an in-game mod manager and KSP wasn't doing the job so they were gonna slap a giant fugly window directly over everything all the time and you can't get rid of it and if you drag it off screen it immediately comes back whenever you reload that's kind of a shame or how about the fact that the game is currently bricked because something that should be built into KSP is instead being done by a mod and the mod isn't terribly well programmed this is, um, to put it lightly, this is a huge problem with Kerbal Space Program, and it's one that really could be addressed. The mods are politely tucked away inside of their own directories. It's easy to scan for which directories are there. It's easy to change the order that they load in. It's easy, it's even easy to check for conflicts. But they've chosen not to do that. They've chosen instead to focus on expanding the gameplay of their core game by adding in more and more loops, even though those loops are incredibly pedestrian um, and they're just not what make Kerbal special. They're just totally standard loops. They, oh, I'm going for money. Ooh, yay money. How about let us do the money half? Let us figure out how we want to do the money. I want to download four different money mods and I want to switch them out. Today I want the one where it's a Vegas style situation where a mission can bring in a jackpot if I can find it, you know, there's a spot on the moon. And if I get to that one spot, I get cash. Nope. Um, you know, there's tons of things you can do with mods. I can change out any of these loops. Science? Ah, the current science mod isn't bad. It, that's the current science system isn't bad, but there are pieces I'd like to try differently. I'd like to try out a mod where every piece of science is uh, continuous rather than uh, rather than atomic. I'd like to try out a mod where every single experiment I run has to have a human at the experiment panel, sorry, a curbman at the experiment, at the experiment panel actively performing the experiment, experiment for hours, for days. I'd like to try all this stuff, but I can't. Because they have decided that these loops should go in specific ways, and that's the way you're going to play them. And no one's going to build a mod that does science differently, because even though they theoretically could, Squad has decided that science goes in a specific direction, and the community is, generally speaking, going to go ahead with that. They're going to be not okay with it necessarily, but they're not going to try and subvert that. If you tried to release a mod that changed the way science worked at a fundamental level, it would languish. And it has languished. There are several mods that do similar things, and they've languished. So, that's my thoughts on KSP. I think that Squad's going the wrong direction. And KSP is drifting away from its position as uh, the king of mods. It's drifting towards a very dull future.